Affordable Super 35 Cine Zooms are difficult to come by and there are only a few solid options on the market. However, DZO Film are looking to cause a stir with their introduction of the 20-55 T2.8 and 50-125 T2.8. Both of these lenses have been designed to cover Super 35 sensors with an image circle of roughly 31.1mm, but we'll take a better look at the coverage in some tests later on. Both lenses feature a matching 16 blade iris with a maximum t-stop of t2.8 which closes all the way down to t22. This means that the bokeh should be round throughout the aperture range and both lenses should match pretty well. Physically, both of the lenses are very similar in size, however you can pick these lenses up in two colours, black or white. Both lenses have the same 95mm front diameter size and there is only an 11mm difference in length with the PL versions of the 20-55 being 164mm and the 55-125 coming in at 175mm. But even though the lengths are different, they do have matching gear placements for easy lens swaps. This will also make matte box changes very quick and easy as you've got the same front diameter and a very small variation in length if you are mounting your matte box to bars. The lenses also both feature an 86mm screw-on front filter thread, so if you want to use them with screw-on filters for run and gun scenarios, this is a solid option. Talking about run and gun, these lenses will be very popular with these kinds of setups because of their weight. The 20-55 is roughly 1.52kg and the 50-125 is roughly 1.7kg. The lenses are incredibly well put together and the 270 degree focus rotation feels smooth and consistent. However, focus, zoom and iris all feature your standard M.8 pitch gears for use with traditional fizz systems. Focus markings are decently spaced and feature both imperial and metric markings. The 20-55 has a close focus of 0.6 meters or 2 foot and the 50-125 is roughly 0.8 meters or 2 foot 8 inches. The only gripe I have with the physical design of the lenses is on the 50-125 which because of its focal lengths has tons of markings and they are just way too close together. The lenses have an interchangeable mount that allows you to use the lenses on a range of cinema cameras. When you initially purchase the lens they will come with a PL mount but they will also include an EF mount in the box with E and LPL mounts becoming available later on. Out of the box, you get a bunch of awesome accessories that I really wasn't expecting on the lens of this price. The lens comes packed in custom cut foam with an interchangeable EF mount, a shim kit, which has a really nice shim case, a lens support Y bracket, two lens support risers, two tools for changing the mount and a bunch of spare screws. It's awesome to see such an affordable lens that comes so complete. I really like that shim case and luckily you get a decent range of shims because both of our demo lenses were out. Using our collimator and projector, we had to add a good amount of shims to both lenses, so if you do end up picking up a set from us, I recommend doing this yourself or asking your account manager for advice on how we can do this for you. However, the interchangeable mount system is easy to get off and getting shims in is an easy process, so this isn't a huge deal. One thing that I have heard people complain about is the compatibility with adapters and speed boosters. So we grabbed every adapter we had in our demo stock and put them to the test and here are our results. When it comes to speed boosters, you cannot put these lenses onto any of them. This is because of the amount of glass that protrudes out of the back of the mount. So please don't try it, you may damage your lenses or your speed booster. When it comes to regular PL mounts, both the wooden camera L to PL and Vocas E to PL we tried worked fine, but the MTF E to PL did not. With EF adapters, the MC21 worked fine, and so did the Metabones EF to E Cine and RF to EF adapter from Canon. So if you're wanting to adapt the lens to your mount, just make sure you pick up one by a brand that I haven't mentioned that works here. The 20-55 comes in at just 1,759 excluding VAT, and the 50-125 is a little bit more expensive at 1,922 excluding VAT. This puts them in a really interesting price point with other lenses like the Lao Oom, the Sigma Cine Zooms, and Fujinon NK series. However, these are a good amount more affordable than those. So how do they perform? Well, let's take a look. We've shot some control tests and also some creative tests. With the creative footage, we took the lenses and a C300 Mark III down to the Malay Mile. Here are some highlights.
The range of the lenses is really awesome. When you have the pair, you have pretty much every focal length that you could want. They balanced well on the C300 and didn't make the rig too heavy to run around with. Let us know what you think of the footage below. Personally, I think these are quite nice and they render skin very well. They have a more arty look than clinical, but I think a lot of people will like that. For our control tests, we shot on our Red Gemini in full 5K mode and have then added overlays to show the usable resolutions of the rated image circle as the lenses are only rated for a 31.1mm image circle and the Gemini in 5K full frame requires at least 3473 to cover it. When it comes to bokeh, the 20-55 has a consistent look throughout the range. From 14mm onwards, you can see the bokeh start cutting towards the edges of frame, however stopping down fixes this a little bit. You can also see slight colour highlighting around the circular light sources here and a little texture. With the 50 to 125, the bokeh is very similar in look. You again can see slight colour highlighting around the circular light sources and a little texture. You can also see some cutting from around 65mm onwards. However, bokeh shows a bit more elliptical shape, which sometimes turns triangular. Stopping down will help the shape and cutting at the longer focal lengths. You can also see some distortion in the bokeh. Overall, bokeh is completely subjective, but the pictures lean more towards arty than clean. So if you like a more imperfect look with good fall off and depth, these may be a nice option. Flares are consistent in color across the two lenses and look nice, but are maybe a touch green for my liking. Overall though, I think they look nice and soft without being too blocky. The 2055 is incredibly good when it comes to breathing performance. It is so minimal, which is very, very impressive. However, the 50 to 125 does have some visible movement, though I've seen much worse at this price point and even higher to be honest. So overall, not bad. Both lenses came out of the box needing shimming. So we took the whole five to 10 minutes it took to fix that. And boom, you have full parfocal cine zooms. With these additional shims, both lenses hold focus really well throughout the zoom range. This is why we buy Cine zoom lenses, people. When it comes to coverage, the two lenses are rated for 31.1 mil. So that will cover most current Super 35 sensors, which you can see from the, our little chart here. However, we shot our tests on a Red Gemini, as I know that these lenses are gonna be incredibly popular with it. In the Gemini's 5K full frame mode, it requires an image circle of 34.73 millimeters, and both lenses do cover that but the corners do get a bit funky, which is normal when you are shooting outside of a lens's rated image circle like this. For some, it may be usable, but for others, it may not. For them, I would recommend shooting in 4.5K full frame mode or 5.5K HD mode. If you wanna see how our lenses cover your camera, head over to our lens and camera coverage tool to see real light coverage images. Looking at the 2055 first, the lens handles the center of frame really well wide open with very minimal CA. However, as you go out to the edges of the frame, you can see the resolution drop off quite a lot. However, depending on your taste in lens, this may be quite nice. This drop is pretty gradual, so imagery should look very nice. As you stop down, performance across the whole frame is improved when it comes to both sharpness and chromatic aberration. Corners don't really get tack sharp though until around T5.6 or 8. The 50 125 behaves very similarly with decent center performance wide open, which drops off towards the edges of frame, which means that the two lenses should match very well in this regard. However, if you want to stop down and get a bit more resolution, you can. When it comes to distortion, the 20 55 starts off with barrel distortion. And as you zoom, this turns into pin cushion distortion. This is quite strong. The 50 125 starts with pin cushion and has it pretty much throughout its range, though it's not quite as strong as the distortion on the 20 55. In conclusion, the Pictor zooms are an easy recommendation for people wanting two excellently designed and matched cine zooms in the sub £5,000 price point. They are some of the best bang for buck cine zooms you can currently buy. They are compact, relatively light, have great mechanics, an easy IMS system with PL and EF mounts in the box, and the image is decent but leans more towards arty than clinical. If you want to see for yourself, get in touch with us and you can organise a demo, details of which are in the description below. Let us know what you think of the DZO Pictor zooms in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.